So we have a little problem this week. Our, uh, our shared environment that we're using on Oracle, which is Oracle Application Express, which is hosted at Oracle, um, you know, as you can tell, because we go to a URL, it's something.oracle.com. The, uh, it's a shared environment, so certain things are locked down. Um, you know, we've had, for the most part with this course, we haven't really had too much trouble with that, but this week is, is the exception. Um, we won't be able to create user accounts or manage user accounts because all of that is, is, uh, is locked down from us. We don't have privileges to do that. So, so this week, instead of doing a demonstrative lesson where I'm going to show you things in, in Oracle using Application Express, instead I'm going to just talk about the material. Now, I, I understand that it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do the practical assignment because you won't have me giving you examples of exactly how to run these commands, but you'll see them in the PowerPoint. Same commands that I would be typing into the web browser you'll see here. So it'll give you some idea of how to complete those, uh, how to complete those assignments. So our objectives, I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept of data security, uh, how do we create user accounts in Oracle, um, talk a little bit about system versus object pr uh, privileges, um, how we can grant privileges to users, we'll talk a little bit about password management, um, we'll talk about what roles are, so roles are going to let us group our users, so instead of managing them individually, we can just put users into a role and manage them uh, in, in groups, and then, uh, and then finally we'll talk about how to revoke privileges and then remove users and roles. Uh, so that's our basic uh, plan here, and that should cover all of the topics for security in uh, Oracle. Now, when we talk about data security in most computing classes, we we'll usually talk about two subjects uh, or two things. We talk about authentication and authorization. Authentication is identifying who you are, and your book doesn't really talk about that much, but authorization is what you're allowed to do, and that's going to be privileges, which we're going to talk about later. So authentication is who are you, and authorization is what are you allowed to do. And, uh, and we're going to talk about how to do all of this stuff in this unit. So this unit is very much about data security. But before I go too, too far here, I just want to mention that with database engines, um, what, what I find mostly in the field is that we're not using exclusively using the database engine for user accounts uh, for authorization and authentication. Instead, in many cases, we are using Active Directory, for example, or a network um, a network. Um, uh, operating system like uh, like you know Microsoft Windows Server Active Directory and it's managing all of the user accounts for us we're not going in and doing all this stuff you know we're in, in Oracle instead this stuff is all kind of passed through some other system like like Active Directory so I would highly recommend if you're not familiar with Active Directory it's a good thing to learn about uh, especially before you get into the field uh, you'll certainly come in contact with that and uh, and you'll you'll definitely have to integrate that with database engines and most database engines today do have some integration capability with Active Directory. So um, so instead of having to create user accounts directly in the database, although a lot of times we still have to create the user accounts and marry them to the user accounts in Active Directory, but it certainly makes things, you know, in some sense a little bit harder, but also a little bit easier. Uh, you know, it shifts some of the administrative requirements to another, um, to another area. So, but anyway, um, so I just want to mention that, that even though we're talking about all this stuff, um, you know, that that's another another option that's available to you as a DBA. So when you're ready to create a user account in Oracle, this is the command that you're going to use. It's create user, then the username, identified by, and then you put the password. So if I were creating a user name, you know, my name is Brian Green, so if my username was B Green, it would be create user B Green, identified, and then one, two, three, four, five, which would be the uh, worst password ever, but um, theoretically you could create a user account with that password. Um, but that's the kind of password an idiot would use on their luggage, right? Um, so there are two types of privileges that, that we talk about in Oracle. There are system privileges and object privileges. So system privileges allow the execution of DDL. Now, if you recall, DDL is data definition language. So um, system privileges allow you to create tables, for example. They allow you to delete tables, to modify rows, and you know, not modify the specific data in the rows, but modify uh, the columns, rather, the definition of a column create views, things like that. Where object privileges allow you to manipulate those objects, right? So that allows us to select, to delete, to update, and so forth and so on. So again, we have system privileges, which allow you to do DDL operations, and then object privileges, which are married mostly to DML operations, which we learned about already. So even with a valid username and password, you still need to have the create session privilege to connect to the database. This is one of the common mistakes that students will usually make in this in this in this practical assignment they'll say well I you know if I was in a classroom and everyone was creating their user accounts on a 
on our own Oracle environment because we would have permission to do this. Um, you know, students would create the user account and say, I can't log in. And it's because before you're allowed to log in, you have to have permission to create a session. If you don't have permission to create a session, you can't create a session. So you wouldn't be able to log in and create that session. Uh, so that's the command that, so, so really it's a two-step process. You have to create the user account uh, and then you, you know, along with the password, when you create that user account, then you have to grant create session to that user. Uh, so that's an important step that you don't want to forget. So system privileges will affect the user's ability to create, alter, and drop objects, which I talked about, so all those DDL commands. Uh, you can list all the available system privileges through the system privilege map, and this is what it's going to look like. So if you do a query from system privilege map, it'll show you what the uh, user is allowed to do or what your current user um, is allowed to do. So uh, you won't be able to run this on Oracle's um, Application Express that we're using in this course because we don't have permission. But even when you're logged in with that admin account, you, you don't really have permission to do this. Uh, but I just wanted to show you what that would look like if you did have permission to do that. So system privileges can be given to someone using the grant command. So when you type the grant command, you put in the name of the privilege that you want to grant, or you can list them. So you can list multiple privileges, and then you list the usernames or role names, which I'll talk about later. So you can list users and roles that you want to grant permission to that, uh, to that type of, of privilege. So the grant clause identifies the system privileges being granted. The to clause identifies who is, you know, whether, you know, the, the various users or roles that you're going to grant those permissions to. And the with admin option clause allows the user to grant privilege to other database users. So they would be able to then grant them to other people, which obviously we can't do in, in our shared environment here. But, um, but theoretically, if you had your own server, you could. So these are some of the object privileges. You can uh, grant uh, select, insert, update, delete, and alter, um, which would work on a table or a view. Um, so for example, uh, grant privileges through the grant command, you would type grant. Uh, the object privilege, the column name, and so forth on some object name to some username, right? So that's how we would grant object privileges. So it's a little different than granting system privileges because you have to indicate what they're allowed to do and which objects they're allowed to do that on. So it's going to be a little bit different. So we have to use that on keyword. All right. So again, the grant clause identifies the object privilege. The on clause identifies which objects they're allowed to work with. And the two clauses, who we're giving the privileges to. And again, it can be at the user or the role level. And with grant option allows the user to assign the same privilege to other users. So if they're the owner of the object, then we would probably want to give them the discretion to, uh, to give out access to that object to other people. And that, by the way, it's called discretionary access control if you were taking an IT security type course. All right, so here's some examples of the grant command. So the first one, is, um, is granting select and insert on uh, customers to a user called R. Thomas. And the second one is granting uh, select and update, an update only on last name and first name on the customer's table to R. Thomas, right? So, so R. Thomas would be able to select and insert, but only update last name and first name on that table based on these commands. So to change a user password, right? So our user already has their account, they forget their password or we need to change it, you can use the alter user command and you just change the password by adding the, the identified by and then whatever their new password is going to be. So this is how you would update a user's password. So a role is basically a group or a collection of privileges. Um, so instead of managing users individually, right? So um, you know, if I, if I had 18 users and I needed to modify the permissions for all 18 users, that's kind of a pain to do all the time. So instead, if they're all the same type of users, let's say they all work in the accounting department, I can create a role called accounting and then assign all of my accounting users to that role. That way I can assign their permissions all at the same time. So that's what a role does for us. So it's for, it's, it's for administration purposes. It makes it a little bit easier. It's, uh, it streamlines our administration. So roles can be assigned to users or other roles, which you can use this command to assign roles to uh, users. All right, so a user can be assigned several roles. They don't have to be just in one role. And roles can be enabled uh, one at a time. Uh, you can, only one role can be des uh, designated as the default role for each user. 
and the default role can be assigned through the alter user command. All right, so roles can be modified with the after role command, or I'm sorry, the alter role command. So if you need to change a uh, role at some point, you can do so. Um, and by the way, there's the command. So alter role, role name, and then you can give it a new password for that role, for example. All right, so here we're selecting from the role uh, table privileges. This shows you the privileges for uh, anyone in that particular role. So this role is order entry. So this is showing you all of the uh, uh, all of the privileges that are available to anyone who is in the order entry role. You can revoke system privileges with the revoke command, which you can see here. Okay, so we can uh, revoke those privileges just like we can from a user, although I didn't show you that yet. Uh, and we can also revoke uh, privileges um, to to rollers. Um, I'm sorry, we can revoke privileges from both roles and users. Uh, so if you use the revoke command, revoke role name from user role name, right? So that's the basic syntax, which you'll find in your textbook. So users can receive privileges via a role that is dropped, will no longer have those privileges. So if you remove a role, so let's say you create a role, you put a bunch of users into that role, and then you add privileges to that role. So, you know, this is usually how it would work. Like going back to my accounting example, maybe I've got 18 users in accounting. I know that I need to give all 18 users access to 36 different objects in three, you know, five, six different ways. So what I would do is, is uh, uh, you know, obviously those users may already be created. So I create a role. I would put all of my users into that role. And then I would just one time issue the command for all the different privileges that I wanted to assign to the users in that role. Now, that'll instantly give all of those users access to those objects to do whatever it is that I, you know, that I'm giving them privilege to do. But then if for some reason I go in and I drop that role, so if I remove that role, anyone who was in that role is going to lose all of those privileges instantly. Um, so it's not like they're going to keep those privileges even though I remove the role. They're going to lose all of those privileges. So that's, that's roughly how it works. And then, of course, if you want to get rid of a user, use the drop user command. And that's going to get rid of our user account uh, that we created. So if we created one in the beginning, you know, if I were showing you this in Oracle because we had access to do this, uh, at the very end, I would just, you know, I would type drop user username when I'm done with the exercise to get rid of that user so I don't have them laying around in my database after we uh, played with it. So that's it. That's some of the basics with working with user accounts in uh, in Oracle. Uh, like I said, I, we can't do it in Apex this week in Application Express, but I think, uh, you know, if you review the book and take a look at this presentation, you should have enough information to complete that practical assignment. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and again, you won't be able to try these commands, and I understand that that, that might be a bit of a, of a challenge for some of you, but do the best you can, and uh, certainly I'm going to take into account when I look at the work that you've produced, I'll, I'll understand that you weren't able to actually test any of those commands uh, before you turn them in. So, you know, as long as you get them pretty close to the, to the right syntax, you know, as long as you, um, you know, you're using the syntax from the textbook, uh, you, you know, and demonstrating that you reviewed the material, I think that would be sufficient. So if you have any questions, again, let me know. And uh, I apologize for the inconvenience of not being able to practice these in Apex. Thank you.